Welcome to Herbally Yours, an adventure into the world of natural medicine. Here is your host, Dr. Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse who will help you take the leap to ultimate wellness. And greetings. Thank you so much for joining me, Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse, for another edition of Herbally Yours, right here on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Herbally Yours brings you the latest information about the many facets in the world of natural living, and that includes such things as physical health, spiritual health, and emotional health. And today, we're going to focus on a book called Raising an Aging Parent, Guidelines for Families in the Second Half of Life. And we'll be discussing this with author Dr. Ken Druck. Dr. Druck holds a PhD in clinical psychology from the Fielding Institute and is a graduate of Hofstra University, for those of you who are our local listeners here on Long Island, because we're the voice of Nassau Community College. He is a rock drummer who's jammed with bands all over Long Island and in many areas, including Blue Oyster Cult, as well as a lifelong athlete who played soccer on the U.S. team in the Senior Olympics and was named All New England in basketball and soccer in high school. Dr. Druck was known as Dr. Ken on Oprah before there was a Dr. Phil. Among his many accomplishments, he shares information about the sandwich generation and we'll find out what he means by that in his new book raising an aging parent so thank you so much for joining us today dr Druck. so good to be with you ellen i was very involved with the long island soccer team as a soccer mom my son who's 45 <laughs> now i don't know your age but he was on all kinds of soccer teams Um, out of Oyster Bay, and they even traveled to Europe. And he was very, very serious about soccer as a young man and even went to college uh, with a scholarship in soccer. And he continues to this day to, he lives in Seattle, to coach local teams. Well, it's a joy to have been able to play competitively for so many years and my goal was to play in the senior olympics to keep those wheels on and to keep my knees healthy enough that i could play in the senior olympics and i was able to do that and uh and enjoy even though we learned how to work the passing lanes you know when we're no longer have have 19 year old or 18 year old legs speed and reflexes we learn to work the passing lanes that's what we do in life as well well, that leads to your book. I love the picture on the cover, Raising an Agent Parent, Guidelines for Families in the Second Half of Life, because that's a great picture that they used on the cover, because you can clearly see three generations linked. Ellen, you know, who, there are three sets of hands on that cover. Do you know whose hands those are? Those are my, that's my hand being held by my daughter's hand who and my uh, my pinky is being wrapped around and held by my grandson oh how so cute is that that yeah. picture was taken uh just a few weeks after my my twin grandsons were born and it was a spontaneous picture we took and we looked at it we said you know what that's the cover of the book and it we used it immediately so uh oh. Yeah, that's couldn't what the cover be more of the book perfect. is. It just couldn't be more perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, that's that's something that, you know, everybody may not be at that age yet, but you get to an age. Well, let's talk about what do you mean by the sandwich generation? That would well, be your you daughter know, there, not my you. My daughter. <laughs> my daughter is a sandwich generationer, and the sandwich generation are those people, and there are many millions of them, who have parents that are getting older. And when I say getting older, I, or your parents could be 55, you're 50, 60, 65, whatever, or 90, 85. But your parents are getting older, and you may also have kids. And if you don't have kids, you've got a career, a job, 
perhaps a life partner, a spouse, uh, and and you're trying to have a life as well, maintain your health and well-being, invest time into into your own uh, fitness and physical well-being and spiritual well-being. So you may be squeezed in a caregiver role with on both ends. And uh, we call that the sandwich generation because it requires a whole new set and a whole new operating system for self-care. The demands of being a sandwich generationer are sometimes so great that we really need to download and upgrade our self-care master plan. Well, I have to say that I definitely fit in that area. I'm lucky enough to say my parents mid-90s and very, very healthy and well. And unfortunately, my father actually um, passed away just less than a month ago. Suddenly, he was fine, 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 compressed aging, right? And then now my mom. You know, my mom really requires sort of 24-hour day care, so I find myself over there three times a day and having to get an aid. And then I have kids, one of whom is disabled and, you know, I'm actually in a home and needs a lot, a lot of care. So, yeah, I actually today, before our show, looked at which yoga class can I squeeze in today because I really feel that I have to maintain a sense of importance about myself, especially with all this extra stress. You are so on the right track, and oftentimes we don't realize it until we are so far underwater and uh, both we burn the candle at both ends. We are so our neurotransmitters are so frayed. We're so we're burning out, and we don't realize what's happening to us. So there's a rawness. There's an impatience. There's an you know we're we're agitating. We're we get more easily upset. So all the symptoms are there that we we need to truly get the new operating system for self-care and that that's that doesn't mean a manicure and a pedicure alone it means truly looking at what are the self-care saboteurs because many of us know what to do we know what to do to take better care of ourselves but we still don't do it so we need to understand what self-care saboteurs inhibit our ability to take care of ourselves stand in the way of our taking better care of ourselves. And then we need to come up with a master plan that generously affords us time to come up for air, to rest, balance rest with activity and and uh, activity with rest, and to really refill our cups so that we can really show up for our aging parents and, and our children, whatever their needs may be. Well, you are listening to Herbally Yours on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse, and today my guest is author Dr. Ken Drock, and we're talking about his new book, Raising an Aging Parent. Now, Dr. Druck, why do you use the word raising when you're referring to people who obviously have to be older than us if, we, if they are our parents? Well, we're still... Aren't we still, as we did with our kids, when we we talked about raising a child, we weren't talking about controlling and dominating and and diminishing. We were talking about raising them up, empowering our kids, helping them think critically, helping support them in the things they weren't ready or could not make good decisions about, but really being there for them and raising them up. And we want to do the same thing with our parents. You know, maybe they're they're not the younger version of who they used to be, and maybe there are some things that have changed and are different, as with most of all of our aging parents, or parents as they get older, and the transitions that they're facing, maybe moving out of the family house, maybe health transitions, they're having to take better care of themselves because they have developed a health condition. Uh, maybe they're not they're, they're not able to drive anymore, and they're needing to use Ubers and Lyfts. So whatever it is that you're you're involved in, you want to raise them up, not diminish them. You want to empower them. You want to support them. You want to be there as their advocate. And that's what I mean by raising. I think there's a picture of you with your grandchildren at the back of the book here. <laughs> I had to throw that in there. I'm oh my such God! A happy Twins. and proud Twins. grandpa. <laughs> Double you know, trouble. It's, they it's think something I sure. did not expect. 
um, my daughter and her husband decided to, you know, late in the kind of late in the game. Hey, we're going to have some kids, and ended up with twins, and they are such a source of joy. Um, you know, often in the book I talk about the transitions and the, the the changes, how life sometimes turns on a dime, and we see that in our world every day. And uh, for me, uh, having lost my oldest daughter, Jenna. In an accident, life turned on a dime, and everything changed forever. And these twins being born many years later, uh, the joy of it just it exploded my heart with joy and expanded it with joy, and life turned on a dime in the other direction. And uh, I'm so, I feel so blessed to have these kids in my life. Well, your book really focuses a lot on practical advice um, for adult children who are caring for their aging parents. And I really like that you have a checklist of, you know, you were right before it it hit home for me when you talked about, let's say, you know, going to get a manicure. There's definitely now, with my mom being now my responsibility as, as well as my disabled children being my responsibility and grandchildren. So there's a lot, but you have to put in that time. So I had to really make a decision, yoga class or go get my nails done. And I decided, you know what, I'm just going to cut my nails, wash my hands, good enough, and do the yoga class. I mean, there is a limited amount of time when you're the sandwich generation. You've got to prioritize, and that's what you did that is so effective, is to realize what you know, what's really, both of those things can help me fill my cup. They're both pampering or they're both health affording and affirming and, and life affirming, and they'll both help me replenish. But which one is really the priority? And yoga one. And that's what we need to do is what do we need to say yes to? Make a list of that. Yoga, we need to say yes to that. We need to say yes to a certain degree of nutrition. We need to say yes to rest. And what do we need to say no to? Maybe, you know, five hours of breaking news every night is, is, is something we need to say no to. We need to <laughs> right, watch <it> breaking. <laughs> right. the condensed version of, of what's happening in the world, however compelling and interesting uh, or infuriating it's making us. But we need to re- really prioritize what is what feeds us and what depletes us, and and to stay true to doing those things that tr- that feed us, that nurture us, that that give us strength and sustenance. Well, I'm going to take a little break right here and remind you that you are listening to Herbally Yours on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Listen live online at nccradio.org or on iHeartRadio. For more information on today's guest or topic, send us an email at whpc at ncc.edu. Stay tuned. Herbally Yours will be right back. Hi everyone, I'm Kristen Bell, and I invited you here to my hotel room to talk about your cheeks, your big, beautiful cheeks. Get your mind out of the gutter, I'm talking about swabbing them. Did you guys know that each year 20,000 Americans with blood cancer are searching for their life-saving marrow match? So here's how we can help. It's really, really simple. All you have to do is swab your cheek. Then go to giftoflife.org and request a free kit so that you can swab a cheek and save a life. My mother was always very active and independent and she was familiar with her neighborhood. But one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. She wasn't even really sure where she was at. It's important for you to talk to someone about it. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, we'll figure it out. When something feels different, it could be Alzheimer's. Now is the time to talk. Visit alz.org slash our stories to learn more. A message from the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. And welcome back to more right here on Herbally Yours on the Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse, and today my guest is Dr. Ken Druck, and we're talking about his book, Raising an Aging Parent. And thank you so much for 
uh, putting all this down because so many people are finding themselves in the sandwich generation. So what about when, let's say, we're talking about parents and taking care of them? Um, You know, they don't always go along with the program. Like, let's say, if you feel that they need 100% care and it might be uh, beneficial for them rather than leaving them alone at night to be in, you know, what we used to call a nursing home. That's that's a passe word, right? It's amazing how language progresses and you're not allowed to say certain things. So there's other names for that now, independent living and assisted living. But what if they refuse to go? I mean, they're not your child. You cannot force them to go. Yeah, the, the, the question of, you know, it, we faced it as parents. What do you do with a child who is not listening and who is not making good decisions on their own behalf? And But now <clears throat> it's not your kid, it's your parent. It's your mother or father who maybe is is still driving, but they're stopping at, red, at green lights or they're driving dangerously and could hurt themselves or somebody else or they're resisting moving out of the family home or whatever. And the first step is always compassion and empathy. It's to understand that they may be resisting because they're they're turning a page on, on life. They used to love driving or their whole life has been lived, their adult life in, in the family home or their their health is being affected and they're not able to take that hike in the morning or that, uh, you know, do whatever they used to do physically. And that they're exper- they're grieving the loss of their past, their younger life. Maybe they're transitioning out of a career. They're retiring. So I think leading with empathy and understanding, and and saying, "Mom or Dad, I, how could you not feel that way? I understand. I accept." And really listening to them, being with them, and helping them deal with the emotional health aspects of what they're going through. Is, is the way, the first step of dealing with a parent who is hiding, denying, repressing, avoiding, running away from, or resisting change, the changes that are already occurring in their life. You know, often uh, we find that our parents are forgetting their memory issues. They're not remembering whether it's the pills they're supposed to take in the morning or in the evening or whatever. And how do we talk to them? Well, it should always start with understanding and a tone of compassion, not a tone of criticism. And then I think the second step is if, if, if nothing is working, then what do we do? We, we switch gears into some, a little bit more tough love. Say, Dad, I'm not going to, you know, I, I can't just stand by and say nothing and let you continue driving, you know, when you are putting your own life and other people's lives at risk. And, you know, let, maybe we need to go to the DMV or, or to your doctor and have this conversation if, you know, and you can, you can ask them. So sometimes we need to pass it to a different authority. It may be another sibling who seems to have a better line of communication with our mom or dad. It may be their doctor, and it may be an authority uh, in whatever area you need to deal with, an authority in independent living, if they're considering moving, or an authority at the DMV, if they're considering continued driving, or their doctor, if it's a health-related issue. And and uh, the third thing is to really follow through and um, to really, if you're going to be their advocate, you need to follow through in a timely way and, and help them turn that corner and make those changes so that their lives, so that they're safe and they're well. Yeah, it's definitely a challenge. That's one of the first things I did um, was actually grab the car keys when my dad passed because my mom is not cognizant enough to drive yet my dad was 94 driving all over the place when he probably shouldn't have either but (laughs) he definitely didn't want to hear about that but that was one of the first things and she actually is looking for the car keys which you know she doesn't understand why she can't find them but i didn't really say well you know you really absolutely cannot drive she hasn't driven for about two years he made that decision about her so it is definitely challenging because, you know, you do still have to honor your parents. They're older than you. And you suddenly being in a position of telling them what to do is difficult. Yeah. And it, and it's important at the same time that, that they go through these transitions that 
you also help them realize the things that they still that you still need from them the things they do that are still so helpful you know how they what what important role they do play continue to play in your life and uh you know i remember asking my mom she was literally 91 92 years old <clears throat> and i was writing books and but my mother was still meticulous when it came to grammar and editing and it's something she loved to do and i would give her chapter by chapter give her give her copies of of what i was writing and she would do a great job editing my books and it made her feel so good to be able to use those skills and abilities and sometimes our parents forget how important their love is, how important the things that they they have experience doing and know, what things they know about, that sage wisdom they have, and to draw that out of them, to remind them how valuable and how cherished uh, they are. Yeah, it's definitely sort of, I would call, you know, a balancing act. And I'd like to remind you listeners that you're listening to Herbal Yours and the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse. And today my guest is Dr. Ken Druck, and we're talking about his book, Raising an Aging Parent. Now, this is something you've been involved with for quite a while Dr. Druck, because you taught a grief literacy class at Harvard School of Public Health and also began an award-winning community nonprofit foundation, and that was for families who have lost a child, which unfortunately you also have lived through. So how do we recover after the traumatic loss of a loved one? Well, that's, that's, that's an, an extraordinary question. Um, because it, it, the word recovery is fraught with, with all kinds of questions. Do we ever completely recover? And the answer is no. Sometimes we, things happen in our lives where we walk with a limp in our heart. Sometimes things happen that are, are, are sources of sorrow our entire lives. But what, what does happen is, it may never get better, like, oh, I'm over it. It may get different in that it's, it's not the central organizing principle of our life, that the pain turns back into love. What started as love, the love of a parent for a child, that turned into this unspeakable pain begins to turn back into love, memories, dearnesses, and we cultivate uh, kind of a spiritual relationship. The love that never dies gets cultivated into a spiritual relationship with the person we love who we've lost. And uh, I have something called the, the six honorings. And it's what we do, what we can do, and what we have the power to do. We don't get to play God. We don't get to decide when somebody lives or dies. And, and if you watching the news every day, we hear about sad and unfortunate uh, news about tragic endings. But what we do get to do is to honor those we have lost in the way that we live on. And the six honorings are six, a code of how to go on, beginning with getting, surviving their death and the things we need, to, the self-care we need to practice to survive their, the loss of them in our lives. And then the other the other ones are uh, I, I won't go through all of them, but, but they're in raising an aging parent. I talk about the six honorings. Right, and you have lots of you know really useful tools in your book, raising an aging parent, Thank about you. you know very practical steps to take for those who find themselves in that situation where they're part of the aging uh, the sandwich generation where they still have perhaps children and other responsibilities, and now they suddenly must take on the care of their aging parents. And it sort of sneaks up on you. I, I for one, I don't think I was really prepared because my dad always took care of everything, (laughs) everything. And then with his very, very sudden passing, you know, I would say it passed through my mind because he was going to be 94, but not really because I didn't realize all the things he did that now have to be done for my mother. 
Exactly. And, you know, often uh, I'm I'm going through that right now with my partner. Her and her dad is very ill and, you know, her mom is calling me and saying, you know, I I don't even put gas in the car. You know, I, That's I right. don't do any of these things and can you come over and help me or, you know, and so it begins to fall to others. And oftentimes it's it, we realize that doing this alone and taking on all the responsibilities rather than in a, in a caring way and a collaborative spirit, sharing the responsibility with other siblings if we have them, sharing the responsibility with caregivers in our communities, most of our communities. And I know, you know, I know Nassau County enough to know that um, there are there are tremendous senior resources. There are resources to assist people whose whose aging parents need it um, available in the community. And all we have to do is get on the computer and Google or go down to one of the agencies. Um, what is, is there an agency you could recommend or how people could Google that and find it? Um, I think if you just go on, you know, go online and Google, you know, Nassau County resources for senior citizens or, you okay. know, resources and, and of course for, we're listened yeah. to all over. So you're saying yeah. wherever you are. Suffolk County, everywhere. Just no matter where you are, there are tremendous resources. And because our population is aging the way it is, there are even greater resources than there were last year and the year before. So there might be new things in your community, but re- all you have to do is Google resources for a- aging resources or resources for aging parents or senior citizens, and you'll probably find that there's a wealth of them in wherever you live. Well, you bringing up si- siblings, I guess not everyone is very for- is fortunate to have siblings, and I am. My sister lives very far away in Vermont, but we're really sharing because, you know, now with the Internet, she's able to do most of the paperwork stuff. Like now, of course, all my mom's bills have to be paid. She never did that, like you said. My dad did all of it. So my sister's taking over everything she can do from a distance, and I'm doing more of the hands-on stuff. So it's really great. great if you have a partner. If, if, if you have a, a, a sibling, a brother, sister, or even a cousin, a close cousin, you know, my aunt, uh, she was she was not directly my aunt, but I call her Aunt Marion, you know, is in a assisted living uh, facility in, on Long Island. And whenever I'm back in New York, I live in California, I'm visiting Aunt Marion. So sometimes it's, and I'm in touch with her, and she loves my books, and, you know, she she is an aunt, truly an aunt to me. So sometimes it's that we have cousins who've remained very close who can be helpful with our aging parents as well. And I have a couple of chapters in the book specifically about sibling relationships and how our parents need us to be getting along with each other. Uh, well, so that we you know can what? share I that to, responsibility. I have to end with that statement, and it's an important one. I want to thank you so much, Dr. Druck, for being our guest today on Herbally Yours. And I want to thank you listeners for tuning into Herbally Yours, produced in the studios of 90.3 WHPC, Nassau Community College, Garden City, New York. For further information, email us at whpc at ncc.edu. This is your host, Ellen Kamai, at naturalnurse.com, inviting you to join us next week for another edition of Herbal Yours. Until then, stay healthy.